I'm John Ennis, and this is my moment. John Ennis is a former Major League pitcher who was born in Montrose, Colorado, and raised in Los Angeles, California. With the 28th pick in the 14th round of the 1998 MLB Draft, the Atlanta Braves selected John out of Monroe High School, and he signed on June 18, 1998. On April 10, 2002, he made his Major League debut with the Atlanta Braves and would return to the big leagues with the Detroit Tigers in 2004 and the Philadelphia Phillies in 2007 before completing a 13-year professional career. John currently resides in Charlotte, North Carolina with his wife, Anna, and sons, Grady and Hayes. My baseball journey started when I was six years old in Norwood, Colorado. Played uh, t-ball for the first time, like most kids. Um, shortly after that, my family moved out to California, Southern California in particular, um, and uh, got into Little League for the first time. I uh, got to face live pitching where guys were actually trying to get me out. Uh, it was at that point that I fell in love with baseball. It was 1988, the Dodgers were the biggest thing in town, and I was hooked. The Dodgers were on fire, they went on to win a World Series. I watched Oral Hershiser win the Cy Young, and Kurt Gibson win the National League MVP award. And from there, I mean, there wasn't anything in my life bigger than baseball. Played for a couple years, uh, got really good at the game, got really good at pitching. Uh, and when I was a junior in high school, I started to become recruited. I uh, had some major league scouts looking at me, so things started to turn at that point. I was fortunate, I was in Southern California at the time, which uh, really, th there's not much more out there as far as baseball where there's just I mean, such a condensed amount of players in one area. Uh, so there was a lot of attention out there and I was doing really well. Uh, so in the uh, fall of my senior year, I was able to sign with UCLA uh, so that I could I guess, take, take the college route. Uh, shortly after that, obviously the season started for our high school team. Uh, went out, got off to a little bit of a slow start but uh, I was able to put, uh, put together a pretty good senior season. And in June, I was picked up by the Atlanta Braves in the 14th round of the draft. So the day I was actually drafted, uh, my high school team was in the city playoffs and we were at Chatsworth High School. Uh, so I knew the draft was going on, but uh, I was in the middle of the ball game. So uh, it wasn't until after the ball game that I actually got up paged by my mom and said that I had been picked by the Atlanta Braves. Uh, I, obviously, I was pretty excited. It was uh, it was kind of a weird day. Our my, my high school baseball career ended, and uh, I had a chance to start a professional career, and it was all in the same day. Uh, later on that night, I, I you know got more details on where I was drafted at, and it was a little disappointing at the time. I, I had slipped a little bit farther than I had hoped. Uh, uh, I would have liked you know like anybody else, I wanted to be the first pick in the draft. I knew that wasn't a, a likely scenario, but. Uh, I went a little farther down. I went in the 14th round. Um, and so basically, on paper, what that would have meant is, hey, I'm going to UCLA to play baseball. Uh, I was fortunate, though. The Braves, uh, the Braves, I guess, knew that I didn't have, they didn't have to rush to sign me, I should say. Uh, there was no rush to sign me because my high school didn't end for another three weeks. Uh, so I actually got to go pitch in a high school all-star game, and they got to come out and see me again after they had already drafted me. And things came together that game for me. My velocity was a little harder. My breaking ball was a little better. My changeup actually showed up. Um, so that kind of bumped me up from being a 14th round pick to getting uh, a signing bonus closer to a, a top five pick at the time, top five round pick, I should say. Uh, and that's when the, that's when the decision became difficult. Uh, you know, in the 14th round, I had no, I, I had really would have never signed w with a scholarship from UCLA sitting there on the table. Uh, but the Braves came in and, and they kind of gave me what I wanted um, as far as the financial part. And so I followed my heart. I went where I wanted to go. I, I knew the Braves, they had a great reputation at the time for developing players. Uh, so I signed the pro contract and three days after my high school graduation, I was in Orlando, Florida for rookie ball. For me, it took me a solid two years after signing to really understand what being a professional was. Uh, you know, right away, I was an 18-year-old kid. I was living on my own. I didn't have, I didn't have the basic understanding of a diet. You know, I basically ate when I wanted to eat and ate whatever I wanted to eat, and that's a tough way to pitch professionally. You know, you got to be in great shape. Uh, 
So the first couple of years, learning to manage myself, once I figured that out, I was, I was 20 years old, um, I had finally dropped a bunch of weight, got down to about 220 pounds, which was my ideal weight. Um, I started throwing harder and I started to turn some heads within the organization. And that's when my elevation through the minor league system first began. Uh, instead of going to the rookie level team, uh, or the advanced uh, rookie level team, which was up in Jamestown, New York, some people call it short season A, I skipped and I went to the full season A team in Macon, Georgia. Uh, and that's where, that's where I first realized that I was good. I was good and I could do this. I really could do this. Uh, I, went, I went into Macon, Georgia and I won, won some games, had a good ARA. And the next season, uh, that put me on track to pitch in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina as a 21 year old. Um, again, uh, you know, I'm still learning how to pitch and everything, but things are really starting to go my way now. I'm in shape, I understand how to take care of myself, um, and I have confidence. After my 21 year old season, which was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, I pitched well enough, and the Braves deemed me valuable enough to put me on the Major League Protection roster, so I was on the 40 man roster. Um, not a whole lot changes in your life. Uh, it's kind of a big tease, you know, you hear about how exciting it is and everybody wants to be on the 40 man. Nothing really changes outside of the fact that you do get an automatic invitation to Major League Spring Training. So in 2002, I got to go to my first Major League Spring Training with the Atlanta Braves. This was a pretty cool thing because I was a, you know, three or four years earlier, I was in high school and I was watching Greg Maddox and John Smoltz and Chipper Jones, and Tom Glavin, and uh, all these guys, Andres Galarraga, Julio Franco. I mean, even when I was a little kid, I was watching Julio Franco. But I watched all these guys, and I get to go and sit in a clubhouse with these guys. Um, see what they're doing from day to day. See how, you know, kind of see how the other half lives. Um, and it was, a, it, was a, it was a really cool time. I probably didn't say three words in the entire spring training because I was just sitting back watching what everybody did. Um, but it was it was pretty fun. It was it was it was fun. It was exciting. It was nerve-wracking. Um, but one of the things I found out was that it was still baseball. Um, I got to pitch early against the college team. I think we played Georgia Tech that year. I got to throw a couple innings against Georgia Tech, and and they kind of they kind of got me some throwaway innings, I guess. But it was enough that that I got to face decent enough hitters where I realized that I could do this. I really could do this. I had my first big league camp. I faced Manny Ramirez and Alex Gonzalez and oh shoot, a couple other guys. Craig Biggio. Uh, I faced him. I, in my first big league camp, I got to face these guys. You know, guys that ended up in the Hall of Fame and, and stuff like that. And uh, it was exciting. And most importantly, I had a little bit of success. I didn't go out there and embarrass myself. Uh, I did everything the way I was supposed to to do it. Uh, I had no. I had no false beliefs coming into camp thinking I was going to make the make the, the major league team, but I was I was definitely excited about getting the opportunity. So at the end of spring training in 2002, the Braves optioned me to Double A, and I headed off to Greenville, South Carolina. Um, my first start there went well. Uh, I threw five innings. I struck out nine hitters. Uh, got my feet wet. A couple days later, uh, it's raining outside on my scheduled start day. Um, and from there, I was uh, I was called into the office with two other pitchers, Scott Sikoyak and Matt Belisle. And so we walk into the office, and we're sitting there thinking, okay, they're going to sort out how we're going to make up the double header tomorrow. So the three of us were in the manager's office, and we figured we were getting our assignments for what would be a double header the next day. Um, Brian Snitker was the manager, uh, my pitching coach. Bill Champion is in there, uh, and our, our uh, actually our pitching coordinator for the minor leagues, a guy named Rick Adair, was in there. Um, none of this is surprising. This is pretty normal. Uh, so he looks at Matt Belisle, manager Brian looks at um, Belisle, and he says, okay, tomorrow you'll pitch the first game of the doubleheader, and Scott, you'll pitch the second game of the doubleheader. Uh, and I was like, well, you know, I was kind of I was surprised a little bit. I was like, well, where does, it, you know, where does that leave me? You know, are they skipping my start or whatnot? Before, you know, obviously before I got that answered, uh, he asked the two of them to leave the office. So I'm sitting there and now I'm getting nervous. Uh, and so they told me that I would not be starting the next day. Uh, and I, you know, I was, I was worried I was being sent to the bullpen, uh, which was, you know, felt like a demotion, I guess, at the time. But instead, he actually said, you'll be pitching in Philadelphia tomorrow night for the Atlanta Braves. 
know, it took a second for me to process that, you know, I obviously I was, you know, with the major league team in spring training and it was exciting and stuff, but actually getting the opportunity to pitch in a major league game, this is that's the whole reason I signed up to play this game. It's the whole reason I was I was playing this game. Uh, it wasn't the money, it wasn't any of these other things at the end of the day. I grew up wanting to play Major League Baseball and my manager had just told me that I was going to get the opportunity. Uh, there was, I, I didn't say a whole lot, I didn't ask a whole lot of questions. Um, I sweated, I was starting to sweat. Walk out of the office, uh, back into the locker room area and everybody's kind of quiet looking at me. And Nobody really knew what the deal was, why I was in the office, but usually when a player goes into an office and the doors are closed, it's either really good news or really bad news. Um, since we were all just fresh out of A ball and we'd only played one game in double A, obviously everybody was thinking it was kind of the bad news thing. Um, but you know, at that point I couldn't stop smiling and, and uh, you know, let everybody know and a couple of my buddies that I'd played with for a couple of years coming up with the Braves were pretty excited. and. Uh, it, I don't know. It was uh, it was all a blur. You know, people asking you, know, what'd you do? They want to know all these specific things that you did. It was a blur. It was a blur. So I come out of the clubhouse, uh, got my cell phone out, called my parents immediately, said, "Hey, I'm going to be pitching in Philadelphia tomorrow. I don't know what you guys have to do to get there, but but you should get there." Uh, called my agent, let him know. He was pretty excited too. I think he's actually. I think I don't have any confirmation of this, but I think he worked with my parents to get the flights out there. Uh, I was basically just trying to take care of myself. Uh, had to go back to my apartment, grab a quick bag, uh, jump in, uh, jump in Scott, Scott Sequoia X Dodge Durango, and got a ride to uh, to the airport. We did have to take a pit stop by uh, by the uh, pool hall that we would frequent, have a beer or two with a couple of the fellas, um, and then from there, I was off to Philadelphia. So I get into the hotel pretty late that night, and uh, obviously I'm a little wired, so I'm not going to sleep directly. And like most 21-year-old, 22-year-olds, what do I do? I turn on ESPN, uh, and I got to see my name float across on the probable starters for the next day for the Atlanta Braves. Uh, that was exciting. I, I mean, I never you know, saw my name on a, a TV before, heard my name on TV before, so that was a, it was a pretty neat, neat deal. Uh, and at that point, that's when I actually realized that uh, the next night I would be pitching on Wednesday night, uh, and ESPN was going to be doing their Wednesday night baseball with Chris Berman telecasting it. Uh, so that was a pretty exciting thing because, you know, I, wa I, I wasn't I wasn't worried about it or anything, but that meant that my family and everybody that I knew out on the West Coast uh, was going to get the opportunity to see uh, to see me pitch. Uh, you know, being out in California, uh, growing up, and then being out in Florida and the East Coast and the South playing through minor league baseball, not a lot of my friends, not a lot of my family got to see me pitch. So I was pretty excited about it being on TV and, and it being a feed that they'd be able to watch. Um, found a way to get some sleep that night. Next day, wake up, do my regular routine, you know, grab some pancakes or whatnot, uh, and uh, head to the ballpark. I was probably, you know, Usually the starting pitcher is the last guy in the clubhouse. I think I might have been the first guy in the clubhouse that day. Uh, went to, it was at the old veteran stadium where the, uh, the, foot, the, the Eagles and Phillies both shared. Uh, so uh, took a took a cab over to the field and, and uh, beat everybody to the clubhouse because I was so excited to get in there and see what it was like and everything. So get to the clubhouse, um, go you know find Bill A. Cree. He was the guy who took care of the traveling secretary duties. Uh, got my Uniform issued to me. Got all my stuff, you know, put in my locker. Got got everything sorted out, um, you know, and then watched, you know, watch the the big leaguers walk in. You know, watching Smoltz and Millwood and you know, Vinny Castilla and Rafael for call and all these guys show up at the clubhouse, and I was sitting there thinking, I'm with these guys today. Uh, that was a pretty neat. That was a pretty neat experience. Um, you know, it was surreal for sure. Um, so sat around a little bit, third base coach came and uh, ran through the signs that I'd need to know the next day. I didn't remember him at the time. Uh, I, all I knew to do was bunt. So that was the only thing that I was worried about from him. Um, and then it was actually, it was uh, getting close to time to get ready. Um, so, you know, like, like my normal routine, get my sanitary socks and everything put on and uh, 
didn't really know what to do as far as preparing to face hitters. I, you know, I, I knew some of these major league guys, but I didn't have any scouting reports around them. And uh, a guy named Kevin Millwood, uh, fantastic career, really awesome guy. Um, he comes over and, and gra you know, takes me over and runs through their lineup with me, uh, which was helpful. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to be able to execute it when I was sitting there hearing him tell me what I should be doing here and there and all that stuff, but it was pretty neat that he was willing to sit down there with me and go through their lineup. Um, everybody, you know, everybody was really professional and, and a lot of times in those clubhouses, everybody kind of just learns to manage themselves. Uh, so it was, it was, a, it was a nice gesture that he came over and, and, uh, and gave me a kind of a rundown. Next thing I know, it's time to get on the field. Uh, so I head out for BP, which was cool because I was from A ball. Uh, you know, I made one one start in Double A, and that's the first time you hit in, in, in the minor leagues. First time you ever hit. Uh, so I had one batting practice like in five years. Uh, so I got to go out and take batting practice at a major league stadium. Uh, you know, Chris Berman standing there, you know, standing there on the cage, talking to guys before the game. You know, obviously our coaching staff, Bobby Cox and Leo Mazzone, and and you know all the all the guys that. Uh, uh, that the team travels with her there. Um, so I got to sit out there and take batting practice. I don't remember, I don't think I hit a ball well, which isn't shocking or anything, but it was fun. Uh, I enjoyed it and it was, it was better than sitting in the clubhouse being nervous the whole time. You gotta get out there and, and move around a little bit. Uh, that was, that was definitely, uh, it was definitely a cool experience. Sat back and, you know, talked to Chris Berman for a few minutes, minutes because since he was doing the telecast that night, he needed to have some information on me and there really wasn't any information on me. So. Uh, he asked me a couple questions about myself, and again, it's all just a blur. So from there, I jumped into the clubhouse uh, and went and got my jersey, uh, the Road to Braves uniform, uh, with my name on the back. It was a pretty, pretty neat deal. Um, another thing I remember specifically about the uniform was in the minor leagues, they made us wear our pants up at our, at our knees, and we had to wear high stirrups and stuff. So first thing I wanted to do when I got there was wear pants all the way down. That's how everybody was wearing it at the time in the big leagues, and I was so excited. So I got pants all the way down. Um, and they fit, you know, they weren't like just some random pants in the minor league clubhouse that you know, it's kind of a coin flip as to whether they're going to be long enough or short enough or loose in the waist. I got a good pair of pants in the big league and it was time to go get loose. Uh, headed out, uh, Henry Blanco was a catcher that day. So I headed out and, uh, went through my throwing program with him, got stretched out, got loose, did, you know, did my normal thing, uh, same as I would have done it in A ball or double A. So it was time to jump up on the mound and I go down there and this is, I was, this is when I was my n most nervous. Uh, in, the, in the 24 hours that I had known I was going to be starting the game that day, this is when it really hit me how nervous I was. And I'm sitting down there and it's cold and I, I'm, I'm sweating profusely. Again, I'll go back to that same, I, I was sweating and it's freezing cold in Philadelphia at this time. And I'm sitting there and I'm getting my dirt ready and I, you know, I'm getting everything set up and, you know, stretching my shoulders and everything. And this, uh, a fanatic from Philly leans over, uh, and gets my attention. He says, hey, Ennis, Ennis. Um, and he said it just like, uh, just like one of my buddies would say, and my brother leans over, he leans over and he goes, Hey, Ennis, F you. And that's when I realized I'm pitching in the big leagues in Philadelphia. Um, uh, and that was pretty exciting, you know, having that realization. And that also, you know, kind of worked to calm me down a little bit. It, you know, it was funny. It was, it was kind of relaxing. Uh, and it, and from there, I, you know, I got going on my bullpen, and I felt good. You know, I, I was, I was a little up that day. Obviously, I had nerves. I was, I was trying too hard, so I was leaving the ball up a little bit in the bullpen. But uh, I mean, there was nothing I could do about it at the time. There was no adjustments I could make. I was, I just had to get out there and let it go. Headed down to the. Uh, dugout, listen to the anthem, you know, kind of just settling in as a visiting team. And uh, one thing I do remember is kind of peeking out down the third base line. That's where they said my parents would be. And right before the game, that's when I finally saw them. They were sitting front row. I don't know who got them the front row tickets. I don't know if that's a normal thing or not, but uh, they were sitting front row uh, right above the third base, uh, right above the third base dugout. Uh, so I was, I was really happy that they got to get out there and see that. So 24 hours earlier, I heard I was going to pitch in the big leagues, and now it was time to go. Uh, Kevin Duckworth was pitching for the Phillies, uh, sinker baller, slider guy. Um, went through the first inning. I don't even remember. We didn't score a run. I know that because it was 0-0 when I went out there still. But uh, jumped onto the mound. Um, 
and it was it was exciting. I mean, it was surreal. You know, standing on the mound, I remember kind of taking a look around as I threw my warm-up pitches and seeing how big the stadium looked. You know, it's that football stadium, so it's a real tall, tall stadium, and just I just I just couldn't believe it. It was just it was awesome. Um, and then I, you know, looked down at the catcher and realized, okay, I got to do. I still got something to do here. You know, now now this matters. Now this really matters. Um, so, you know, I got after it. Uh, Jimmy Rollins was the first guy I faced. He had a ground ball to second base. Um, as far as a, a first start goes in the big leagues, I guess it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. Went a couple innings. Uh, kept my team in the game. Got through, you know, had to battle through some tough situations that I wasn't prepared for, really. Uh, but it uh, gave me a lot of confidence. It, you know, taught me a lot about what I had to do. You know, pitching inside to right-handed hitters more. Um, you know, making sure you're... You, your two strike breaking balls are out of the zone, uh, fielding your position, making sure you're, you know, you're communicating with, with your infielders. Uh, I mean, there was so much that happened in those four innings. Um, it was, I mean, it was incredible. Uh, and, you know, after I threw four innings, it was my second start of the season. So I was on somewhat of a pitch count as a minor league guy coming up. I think I was up to 75 pitches. And I think I threw, did that in about four innings. So I wasn't the most efficient guy that game. Uh, but I went out there and I battled. And uh, at the end of the game, you know, coming out of it, uh, at least when I was pulled, my end of the game, I remember sitting there for a moment and just being like, wow, I want more of this. This is what I, this is what I came for. And, I, you know, I got a taste of it. And it's every bit as good as, you know, I had hoped. Um, you know, everything was, everything was cleaner. Everything was brighter. Everything was uh, more exciting. Uh, uh, everything was bigger uh, and that's what you know that's that's the way I imagined it you know and that's the reason I signed that contract you know when I had UCLA sitting there uh, it was for that moment it was for, it was for my my opportunity to be uh, sitting there uh, playing against the best players on earth with the best players on earth uh, headed back to the hotel and uh, I, that night I didn't sleep it was kind of funny I, I slept a little bit the night before pitching but after I had pitched I was so excited and and it had been such a, you know, there were so many things I was trying to remember and so many things going through my head and so many things I wanted to remember uh, that I, I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep that night. So after that game, I was uh, sent back to double A, which was, it was it was the plan to start with. I wasn't going up there to, to try and impress them and make the major league team. I uh, learned a lot though. I went down to minor leagues and I had a, a pretty good half. I pitched pretty well uh, with the Braves uh, in double A down there. Um, and then uh, it, it would be another almost two years before I'd get another opportunity uh, in the major leagues. I was called up with uh, Detroit uh, in 2004, um, got to pitch. You know, again, it was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the environment was a little different. Um, obviously, you know, the first time uh, there's so many questions that, that you have and, you know, it's the first time you see all these things. Uh, but it was still really exciting. A couple years later, I got called up with the Phillies. Um, you know, same idea. It was, it was fantastic. It was really fun. It was the end of the season. You know, we're going through a uh, playoff run, uh, trying to chase down the Mets, trying to uh, you know, facing the Rockies and you know, facing the Red Sox, facing all these all these good teams there towards the end of the year. Um, and it was it was awesome. It was the middle of the pennant chase, but you know, nothing really compared to that first time as far as just the 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 pure excitement from being called up um, you know it's, it's, it's kind of broke the seal if you will the first time and uh, there's nothing that can really replace that for players out there that are you know looking to get into baseball major league baseball minor league baseball they just want to play they want to have a long career um, what you need to do is pretty simple uh, you need to be on time and you need to be accountable you need to hold yourself accountable for what you do and what you expect out of this game. It's a great game. It's, uh, it's the greatest game as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but the game owes you nothing. You only will get out of it what you put into it. Um, I see a lot of guys that come in, they got tons of talent, uh, definitely more talented players out there than I was. Um, uh, and they come in and they expect it. Uh, and that's, that, that's not how this game works. Uh, you have to come in and you have to be ready to give it everything you have. You have to sell out for it. Um, uh, and if you do, if you do that, you know, two things happen. One is you give yourself a, a legitimate chance. And the other thing is you can look at yourself in the mirror the rest of your life. I'm John Ennis, and that was my moment.